Senator McConnell says he's willing to introduce a clean bill funding the agency as long as Democrats agree to vote on a standalone measure overturning President Obama's immigration orders. But conservative Republicans have major concerns about that plan. And this is a historic debate. This is a historic overreach by this president. And it must be stopped, regardless of the merits of the immigration issue. I think that Congress, if it acquiesces in this and agrees to fund a legal actions that Congress has rejected, then it has weakened itself in a very significant way uh, and would be noted historically. Meanwhile, Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid says his caucus would object to the deal unless Speaker Boehner agrees to vote on that clean DHS funding bill. The problem is, everybody, I'm waiting to hear from the Speaker. The, you know, we have to make sure that people understand the bicameral nature of this Congress that we serve in. So to have Senator McConnell uh, just pass the ball over to the House isn't going to do the trick. Let's bring in Juan Williams, Fox News political analyst, and Jonah Goldberg, senior editor of the National Review and a Fox News contributor. So where do we stand now? Lots of finger pointing going on, but Republicans, Juan, seem to be getting the blame no matter what happens here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And if you look at the poll numbers, it's pretty clear. Uh, this has been pointed out to them. But you have a meeting on Capitol Hill this morning among House Republicans trying to find a way out of this. But at the moment, I think that they feel that, you know what, it's up to the Senate to try to act to push what the voters said very clearly they want in the midterms when Republicans did well. They do not want the president's immigration plan. Well, obviously, Senator Sessions and, and others, Jonah, are very concerned about voting to authorize what they see as an illegal power grab on the part of the president. What other means do uh, Republicans have to fight back? Yeah, look, the Republicans are in a mess. They're sort of in a box canyon at this point, and it's very difficult to see how they get themselves out of it. Uh, part of the reason they're in this mess is because they decided to kick the can into the new year last year when they were voting on the budget. And at the same time, while I, I have a lot of criticisms about the strategy that got them into this mess, it is really amazing that when Democrats were in the majority and Republicans filibustered uh, legislation, Everyone said that the Republicans are obstructionist. Now that Republicans are in the majority and Democrats are filibustering legislation, the mainstream media still says Republicans are the ones who are being obstructionist. You have Democratic senators going out there insisting that uh, Republicans need to put partisan politics aside and move forward on this legislation, even though Republicans have passed legislation. It is amazing the, the, the wind in the sails that the mainstream media gives Democrats on these kinds of issues. Yeah, Juan, talk about that for a bit, because, you know, it, it seems like there must be Senate Democrats who are very concerned. They don't like, uh, typically, I mean, just uh, in broad strokes, they don't like seeing the executive branch grab power that the Constitution says belongs to the, to the legislative branch. A and yet, Democrats in the Senate have been holding together as a block uh, and, and blocking the pr uh, process, procedure of this legislation. Exactly right. We haven't seen any defection among Senate Democrats. And the reason for that is that contrary to what Jonah said, there are lots of people who think that it's Republicans who politicize this by attaching it to the funding bill, that they were using this as leverage to try to force the president's hand. That's why Mc Mitch McConnell, the Senate majority leader now in his strategy, is trying to separate those out, allow a clean funding bill to go through and then have a separate vote in which he hopes that some Democrats might defect because you're exactly right, John. The Demo some Democrats don't like the idea that the president has changed the immigration rules uh, through executive action rather than going through the Congress, which is how immigration law is supposed to be made. So, so now McConnell wants this idea of a, just a clean funding bill right. and a separate vote on, on the DHS, on the president's uh, immigration actions. Jonah? Does that have a chance? Would it satisfy both the, the conservative critics of the president and, you know, keep the Department of Homeland Security open? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's sort of too cute by half. Um, but the real, again, the real problem here is you have Harry Reid, who's now the minority leader. 
dictating to the House of Representatives and trying to run the entire Congress from the minority position. That is exactly the kind of behavior that people accused the Repu that people accused Mitch McConnell of and denounced him for it. But Harry Reid, maybe because he's got those cool sunglasses now, um, can get a seems to be able to get away with it. Let's talk about another issue. The White House also threatening to veto a Republican bill to fix the No Child Left Behind education law, which is set for debate in the House today. This on the heels of President Obama's move to reject legislation approving the Keystone Pipeline. He, he is living up to his word. You gotta, you gotta give him that, Jonah. He is, you know, he said he would, he would pull out his veto pen and he's doing it. Yeah, I, I think one of the most amazing uh, lessons that coming out of the midterm elections is that Barack Obama, you know, there was that old line about Barry Goldwater. My God, he's going to run as Barry Goldwater. Well, it turns out the last two years of Obama's presidency are going to be like the, the first six years of his presidency, which is he's going to be a unilateralist and not give in to Republicans on anything and not compromise while de denouncing Republicans for not compromising. One, uh, are the media uh, paying attention to that? I mean, is, is this just going to be the way it is? Is the president going to take heat for that? I think he will take heat. Obviously, as you heard from Jonah, I think it becomes a, a strong point for Republicans if they, if they try to portray the president as the one who's blocking things. But I think, again, going back to the polls on immigration and on the fu on, even on, on the funding bill here for the Department of Homeland Security, you're going to see people like Michael Chertoff and others come out Tom Ridge Republicans and say you know we shouldn't be shutting down Department of Homeland Security that gives you an indication of the political problem facing Republicans here President Obama hasn't even used his veto pen as much as his predecessors at this point but I no. think we're getting into territory where you're gonna see an escalation of the veto more paralysis I had some hopes that we were gonna come to a happier day uh, after last election more compromise with Republicans controlling the Hill, but it uh, doesn't seem to be that right now. Yeah, I agree well, with Juan. The, the, Cheer up for the worst is yet to come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, you know, the, the Fox News polling says that Americans by a wide margin support the construction of that pipeline, and the president is not listening to them when he vetoes it, apparently. Juan Williams, Jonah Goldberg, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.